Welcome, viewers, to our first episode of Table Talk. Our goal is to invite our guests on the show so we learn how great they are, and you do too. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to the homecoming king himself, Sam De La Paz. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Sam. Get over Get here. Get in there. Get in there. Right here. As he slowly walks so, yes, Nice for having you. No, really, it's a pleasure. Guys, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a real pleasure. All um, right, so how are you doing, Sam? What's new? Um, what's new? Um, a lot of things are new. We got Thanksgiving coming up. That's true. Um, I'm having a good weekend so far. Great cup of water to start it off. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to introduce yourself to the studio audience, like height, weight, stuff like that? Yeah, my name is Samuel De La Paz. Um, my height is 6'7", and I weigh um, like 305, <laughs> 307, I think, last time I checked. Awesome, awesome. Or maybe that was a 2. 3 or 2. So, we're glad to have you on the show, um, being such a well-known figure to our school, but me and Ty were wondering how you got to become the homecoming king. Did you rig the polls? Did you have someone rig it, or who, who rigged it? Next question. So, Sam, how did you feel about the other competitors? You probably weren't worried, right? Oh, no. They were all great men. Uh, we had a very diverse group this year, um, of different color, like Jay Patel, Zan Faisal, then we had Melvin Bonsu and Michael Godek himself. They're all great men that I was up against. Um, it, re it really wasn't that big of a thing, but were, were um, you expecting to win? No, I I don't know why we're still talking about this because it it was. Yeah, I'm very honored to be homecoming king, but in the long scheme of things, uh, I'm glad I could. I mean, I'm glad people voted for me, I guess. But uh, they all deserve equal chances. You know, they all have br brought something different to the table, just like I bring some peanuts to the table today. You guys are oh, hungry. I brought peanuts. Buy some peanuts. How nice wow. of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, how about that homecoming queen? <laughs> have you kept up with her? How long have you known her for? <laughs> oh, um, see, this is the thing I have with arranged marriages. I, I kind of understand how they're not, they're, they're sporadic, you know? Mm -hmm. Wasn't expecting it either. So we're not actually going to get married as king and queen. Sorry, guys, no kingdom. But Zoe Zuzio, she won. She's, I've known her for a long time, and she's in my math class, and I see her every day, and I say hi to her. That's very nice. So, speaking of women, how's the love life? <laughs> Got any kids? <laughs> um, as far as kids go, um, I do not have any with me right now. Um, At home? Uh, I don't weird. remember how many. I couldn't give you a number. <laughs> so you're very saying you have multiple parents. wives? <laughs> no, as far as my love life... Um, if you ever need me, uh, I, I can give you my phone number after the show. Uh, we'll put it on the screen. I'm single worry. right now. It'll be in the comment section below. <laughs> uh, comment if, you, <laughs> if you're free this Friday. Hit him up. Nice restaurant, movie, everything. But in, in all reality, um, I'm waiting until I, uh, you know, really, I, I'm, I'm on a path right now. Mm -hmm. And I need to focus on this path until I'm ready to, to see someone. Yes. Can yes. you reveal that path? Yes, this path is right along 47. You go about 40 minutes, and then you take a right somewhere in Wisconsin. We're going north, okay? It's a nice little little um, local swimming pool, uh -huh. and I go swimming there on the weekends. Nice. I'm training for the Olympics. Nice, nice. You know who Michael Phelps is? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to run like him someday. He's a <laughs> Olympic runner. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were going to go there. All right. So, excellent. Now, we're going to move on to a segment called, What Would You Do? Tyler, you want to kick it off? What would you do if you were bored? A. Okay, I have a question. Can you clarify bored? Like the wooden board? Or like the state of being bored? The state of being bored. Okay, continue. <laughs> so, I'll repeat the question again. What would you do if you were bored? Commit suicide, read, watch TV, or do nothing? Let's see. If this were an extreme case where I had absolutely nothing to do, nothing. I would, I would pick up some good, a good book. 
Um, I'm not much of an electric book kind of guy, like in, what they call them ebooks. I'm more of a paper and pen kind of guy. So I pick up my, my book. Um, one of my favorites is the book Unbroken. You know that book? Yeah, yeah. the movie. And I'll bring, <laughs> I'll take a pen and I'll just annotate it. The rhetorical devices used in it, I really find it fascinating. All right. In that case, I'd never be bored. I'd read that book six times and a half. That's good. I leave myself on a cliffhanger. That way I won't be bored. That's the way to do it. Yeah. All right. What would you do if you saw a fight in school? A, break it up. B, call someone. C, ignore the drama. Or D, record it and yell, world star. Okay. If I saw a fight in school. First off, have you seen a fight in school? I've seen the end of a fight. I was walking outside the hub, saw the fight, ending, and I went back in the hub. What happened in I just fight, like, what you saw? Back in. Um, I saw a bunch of people, and I heard screaming, and then I saw hair, like, fly up, and that was it. So it wasn't very exciting. But my last name being of the piece, um, I would have, if I do see a fight, I would do my best to bring some peace to the world. And stop it. Great answer, great answer. We got one more for you. What would you do if after this show you were to find a winning lottery ticket? That ticket won you five hundred million dollars. What would you do? Um I would try and find who its rifle owner is because I'm seventeen and I can't buy lottery tickets. So I would You would give away the winning five hundred million dollars? I wouldn't be able to do anything with it. I'm 17. What if you got an adult? I'm not a rule breaker. What if you got an adult to cash it in for you? I don't know any adults. That's a shame. I'm, I'm living in the he's kids' one, He's one year away from getting $500 million, Tyler. One month. If, if you found that lottery ticket today, you would have to give it to me. Because I can accept that. Because I he am 18. 18. Okay. I am 18, everyone. So then what would you do with it once I give it to you? Well, the options here are donate to charity, buy a mansion, Separate among family and friends, or throw away the ticket in the trash. Now that last option, I would never do. Just want to let you know that's me. Because you're a greedy pig. That's right. <laughs> Boink. <laughs> um, I would, I would do, I would probably, I would probably do A, B, and C. Donate to charity, buy a mansion, and separate among family and friends. I mean, five hundred thousand, hundred billion, hundred dollars is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I can't even count how many zeros there. It's like ten to the like fourth. <laughs> That's high. <laughs> um, I guess if I if I had that ticket, and I was over eighteen, and I also. Could cash it in. I think I would donate all of it, every last penny, and the paper. Any, any specific? I would recycle the paper ticket. That's that's incredible. You're a great man. What charity would you do yeah. specifically? Um, I'd have to do extensive research in order to find out how the money can make the most impact on right. the United States of America and the world. All right. Thanks for answering. You did great. Now, on the topic of charity, we've also gotten information that you're very active among the community, involved in National Honor Society. What have you done for that? Um, National Honor Society. Mm -hmm. At one of the induction ceremonies, one of my proudest feats is I kept track of who was being called. And at the end, there were a few names who didn't get called that I caught, um, like Bob Chen. I think Julian Collins was another one. And we really caught them just these stray dogs on the side of the street during the induction ceremony and we brought them in we gave them a home and we made them feel one of us incredible incredible so uh we've also heard about like park district stuff have you been working with that yes my good friend uh mr ostrander actually he just had a building named after him this man is a great man and he gave me the opportunity to work with him on park district projects and uh, funny you should say that um this man right here has been, I don't know if you knew this, Tyler, but we've been um, just asking him for materials and building things, like uh, 
hitching rail. You don't know what that is. It's like where you put your horse, but he doesn't have a horse, so he might get one sometime. It's kind of like a fence post, basically. Yeah, but it looks really cool. Another one is we made some birdhouses. Not just me and Shane, but we had a bunch of other kids involved in it. And we also constructed and designed a little sign if you go by the Dikey, Dikey Cabin. Um, that one's really beautiful. And that's in Huntley, Huntley, Illinois. Tyler uh, helped out on that one. Yep, he's on the list. And we spent hours in the summer drenched in sweat and wasps trying to put that thing together. And we did it. We did it. We did it. We did do it. We did it. Yeah. So, are you also participating in any rec basketball teams this year? Good question. Um, I did get signed to a third year um, contract, I guess, as a head coach of Shep's recreational basketball team. We did add have to do we do have some additions to our roster, and we do have we have a senior that left and a couple kids who aren't returning. Um, one completely traded us. Behind our back. I'm aware. Yeah. Can we I mention the name? No, but his name may have to do with a park district. His last name may have been Park. <laughs> and rhymes with Schmanuel. <laughs> e Schmanuel. Um, and we're looking out to go this year to be the best team that we can be. Because we know that there are a lot of tough competition. How well have you guys done in the past? Um... Our, my first year coaching, we were the best underclassman team in the entire rec league. We had the best record as the young, under, as an underclassman team. Last year, we ended up winning the consolation bracket, the, the entire consolation bracket of the entire <laughs> league, and we won that in the championship game, the consolation championship game. And we we put a lot of work into it. Something about being a chef is you're dedicated. What's your favorite product to cook? Oh. That's a tough one. Um, me personally, I like, you know, when it's, when I'm done reading my book, when I'm bored. Unbroken. Unbroken and annotating it. Um, I like to sit down, I like to take out a pan. I like to, you know, oil the pan so nothing sticks. And then pour some milk and cereal in the pan. <laughs> and usually I eat it with a spoon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sounds good. I really do like Cheerios. Cheerios are gluten free, <laughs> but I mean sometimes the plain Cheerios gets plain. So actually, recently I tried pumpkin spice. They they pumpkin spice everything. Cheerios. Yes, Cheerios. I was unaware of that. So I've heard. Um, Not a fan. You got a question? Um, do you plan to do any sports in college? Yes. Oh, well, the are you even going yes. to college? I Is plan. College an option for you? I plan on. Going to a sport college where I major in Ultimate Frisbee. What college is that? Um, it's called Augustana. They're always sending us Frisbee stuff. <laughs> yeah. Probably them. Actually, getting some good offers from them, but the key one is the American Ultimate Frisbee Institute. They're ranked number one in Ultimate Frisbee ma majors. Um, last You've done season, your research. Last year, I had the privilege of working with the travel team, Terra Humara out of Hungry High yeah, School. More. Yes, we were the reigning champs of that league until we got beat. But before then, we were the reigning champs. What was your record, 1-0, before you got beat? I'm pretty sure it was 8-1. Uh, so what do you want to pursue as a major? Do you um, want to become an ultimate frisbee or something else? I mean, that's, that's the path I'm on. I mean, it's either... Making millions as an ultimate frisbeeer, or maybe like engineering. They have Hundreds of thousands as an yeah, engineer. Something like that. But, you know, math and science is really where I feel my strengths are, how I can best serve the world. Alright. So I really like these peanuts, by the way. Enough of you. I don't think you had any. Enough of you. What do you think about us? Let me first say, being in the presence of S and T in a skit, I mean, I never would have thought I'd be in this position. I'm really blown away. Um, and this opportunity, I mean, you guys have started from the bottom, and you're still down there, but you're working your way up there. 
That's okay? right. And, <laughs> we like to think of it like that. <laughs> and the guys, the work that you guys put in, I mean, your your creativity, um, the way you guys go out there just to make, you put smiles on people's faces. I love it. I love your creativity and you guys are loving this, aren't you? Yes. So, um, what's your favorite video out of all of our videos? Oh, actually, I was very, this may be a little controversial, but, uh, Expert 21 video. It was. One of your first ones. Yeah. I definitely, because watching those videos as a kid, now they it inspired me to do good in the world. And you guys made fun of it. And I thought it was hilarious. Whoa, I'm glad, whoa. I'm glad we could do it. <laughs> so any advice for us, like, going in the future? Possible skit idea? <laughs> um, I think a good a skit idea would be you know that commercial, like, oh, what is it? I fall in and I can't get up. If you guys, like, did a parody of that. Oh, yeah. We've gotten that as a request. Like, everyone wants to see that for some reason, so. I, you guys haven't done anything like that, right? No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> if I, well, not, I... if not, um, maybe, like, a Sesame Street thing. I don't know. It popped in my head. Maybe Dude, Tyler could dress puppets. up as Big Bird, and you could be Snuffleupagus. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> dress up. Is those guys. All right, Sam. Thank Are you, you allergic to peanuts? No. Okay, good. Well, maybe up. Oh, I'm screwed. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sam, for coming on the show. We yeah, really appreciate you, you um, doing this for us and uh, being our first guest. You're definitely going to boost, boost our views up, that's for sure. Yeah. We're all about those views, baby. Yes, you guys want to see a magic trick? Let's do trick? this. You want to see a magic trick? Okay, I'm going to count to three. Ready? All right, ready? One. Two, three. Boom! Wow. That's wow! Cool, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Sam DeLopez, everyone. Thank yeah! You. That's amazing. You all have a good night. Wow, I think that was horrible.